This is The Invasion 2, an episode on the Super Mario Bros. X engine. Both the engine and the episode itself were created by Redigit. Now, Super Mario Bros. X was eventually cancelled because apparently Nintendo sent a C&D, or maybe it's because the fanbase was kind of obnoxious and Redigit didn't really want to work on the game anymore. <laughs> Who knows, though, that's neither here nor there. So anyway, The Invasion 2, despite the name, is more of a remake than a sequel. The original Invasion was actually the first episode created for Super Mario Bros. X, so as you might imagine, it was pretty dated by this point. And I believe this itself was actually a fairly large update that The Invasion 2 was created for. I can't remember each and every update and what was in it, so I can't tell you for a fact what was included in this, but... Just know that this was made to show off a lot of new features. I mean, technically speaking, both the original and this version were made for that, but this version does a much better job because A, it's less dated, and B, it's just more fun to play in general. So, we're starting out with Super Easy Road, and as the name implies, there's nothing really too special about this stage. No, it's not one of those games where it's like, oh, hey, the first level, uh, yeah, it's super hard, and the rest of it is annoying to play. Because, you know, what the hell not, level design's great, right? Now this is actually trying to be an actually fun game. But, since there's not really too much to speak about, well, actually, no, there is one thing. I'd, I'd just like to uh, point out that this does actually do a fairly good job of sort of uh, capturing the Super Mario Bros. 3 feel. I mean, SMB3 isn't one of my favorite games, but most games do start out with the whole Block and Goomba thing, you know, the it's supposed to be reminiscent of the original Super Mario Bros., so this is doing a bit of its own thing. I mean, of course, other, like, Mario hacks and stuff have probably started out with this sort of uh, level design, but I, I do think it gets the style fairly well, so I do like it, basic it is as it is, but since it is fairly plain, uh, I'll talk about the characters. There are five playable characters, and of course, Mario is the most basic out of all of them. His run speed's nothing special, his jump's nothing special, but he's not painfully average like he was in uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, which it was kind of a mistake to play as him, really, because he was just so average that he had no advantage. I think in a game like this, there is an advantage of having an average character. Uh, also, a few things to point out. Uh, despite the Super Mario Bros. 3 sprite, he does actually have the inventory from Super Mario World, which does allow you to store an item if you already have a power-up. Uh, it does work a bit differently. Uh, items don't drop automatically if you get hit and turn into small Mario like it does in uh, Super Mario World. Instead, you always have to do it manually, because, hey, you might not always want it to drop automatically, because that could be kind of annoying. Uh, also, uh, I believe in Super Mario World, if you grabbed a mushroom, if you had something like a fire flower in your inventory, it would actually replace the fire flower, even though the mushroom isn't as good an ability. Or, yeah, ability. Uh, it would just replace it anyway. It doesn't do that in this. If you pick up a mushroom and have a better item, it won't replace the better item. Mario can also spin jump, so that's pretty useful. If you press the uh, alt jump button, he'll spin jump, which can uh, allow him to jump over certain enemies that a normal jump might not be a good idea for. And on the world map, you can switch characters. Just press start and press right and left. Now, while Mario's not painfully average like he was in Super Mario Bros. 2, you're not going to be seeing him again because I don't like playing as him. Luigi plays pretty similarly to Mario. Uh, he does have a higher jump, and he does slide a bit. I think he has a bit lower of an acceleration, meaning when you get the ability to fly, it takes a little while for him to get off the ground, but one of the biggest differences, other than his jump, is the fact that if you hit a coin box, the coins will just come spilling out. Mario can only take coins out one at a time, but no, Luigi just ejects them all out, which is usually pretty useful for larger coin boxes. It can be a, a bit annoying for, like, single coin ones, since you still have to manually pick up said coin, but really there's no huge disadvantage to it unless, like, the box is next to a cliff and then the coins fall off it, but really that's kind of rare. It probably won't happen. So in general, Luigi, as per usual, is just much more fun to play as than Mario is. Oh yeah, and also, sliding. Mario and Luigi can slide down slopes like that if you press down on them. I believe sliding was actually one of the uh, big features for the uh, new update that the Invasion 2 was for. Again, I can't say for certain, but I'm fairly certain that it was. Now, this level was actually a red level, if you noticed on the map, which, just like Super Mario World, means there are two exits, 
but as this toad says, the exit is up there and we can't get to it without something to jump off of. We will be back here fairly soon because we will be getting a boot soon in order to jump up there, but for the time being we're just going to have to complete this level the normal way. Which is actually fairly quick, we're actually almost at the end because this is a pretty short level. It's kind of just there to show off the fact that uh, this is a uh, two exit level. But anyway, uh, you might have all you might have also noticed that uh, we got those little panels at the end. That's a Super Mario Brothers three exit. But unlike that game, you don't get three panels and then get an extra life based on what panels you get. No, you either get a star and get an extra life, or you get a mushroom or flower and just get points. So, really, the only thing you're waiting for, aiming for is a star. And it's kind of hard to actually get a star because the uh, pa panels are flashing by so quickly, so I wouldn't really rely on that as an extra life getting method. So anyway, since we're done with that, we're going to switch to Peach, who works quite a bit differently than Mario and Luigi. Like Mario, she does only eject coins out of a box one at a time, but that's kind of where their similarities end. Peach, uh, unlike Mario and Luigi, plays a lot more like her Super Mario Bros. 2 self, though then again there aren't that many Princess Peaches to choose from, because she's not generally playable, but she does float like she does in Super Mario Bros. 2, which, while that can be very useful, she doesn't have a spin jump, so there are actually a few enemies she can't really take care of with normal jumping. With other items she can, but stuff like Spinies, yeah, she can't deal with those guys without a shell or a fire flower or something. Her fireballs also work a bit differently. I believe if you hold Alt Run, is it? Yeah, I think it's Alt Run. She'll actually hold the fireball above her head, which I don't really think is that useful. I mean, fireballs already bounce. I, I guess it could be useful for getting a certain angle, but you don't usually have to be that precise with fireballs. Now, you might also notice that she doesn't have a uh, item inventory either. Yeah, Peach can't actually store items if she picks up an extra one, she just has hearts, and given you don't get hit and immediately go to Super Mario or Luigi, or Mini Mario and Luigi like you do in Super Mario World, you go to Super Mario or Luigi if you had a power-up, it's not really that useful. Though I guess the only real advantage the whole heart thing has is the fact that she can pick up two mushrooms, and well, no, then again, if you pick up two Mario mushrooms as Mario or Luigi, then they'll just get a mushroom in their inventory, so yeah, it's not really as good because you have a definite health and you can't actually store multiple good items or something like that. You're just stuck with one item that you have to use. But anyway, similar to Peach, we also have Toad. Toad can also hold fireballs above his head, he also has the health system, but he can spin jump. And of course he is the fastest runner in the game, so as per usual, he is the Toad of the pro strats. His strats are far more pro than anyone else's, and also, why is there a checkpoint already? We just started the level. And if you're wondering why I'm not sliding, well that's because both Toad and Peach can't actually slide down slopes, so if there is a level that's focused on sliding, then it'll usually be Mario or Luigi only, since Toad and Peach can't do that. I guess holding fireballs like this is kind of useful here, but I probably could have hit that uh, piranha plant normally. By the way, this is a custom enemy, I think. I mean, it is based on uh, piranha plants, of course, but I don't think it appears in any of the games, and it takes multiple hits to defeat. Gee, I wonder what this guy's gonna say. Yeah, this guy's gonna out and out say that this is a red level, so there is a secret exit. Even though we've already been to a level with a secret exit, I, I guess in this case, it's not really banking on you going to the optional area, or semi-optional area. Anyway, the last playable character is Link for some reason. I guess Redigit just really likes Zelda 2, somehow. Uh, Link is definitely the most out there character to play as, because uh, the other characters you have to hold the run button in order to get them to run, so it's fairly easy. Link has to build up momentum, so as you run, he'll get faster and faster until he's just at a full dash. Uh, he does have the down stab, which, while he doesn't have a spin jump, that can make him useful for killing uh, enemies you can't just normally jump on with 
ease. So I, I guess he does have some advantage because, you know, the da down stab's also pretty good. He's also got the up stab. Uh, of course, he still has a health system like uh, Toad and Peach, so he can't store items either. Well, he can store items, but just in a different way. And if you don't notice, his fireballs are some of the most different. While the other characters do have fireballs that sort of bounce differently, Link's just go in a straight line, so he's a fair bit different than most characters. Also, if you try to t climb things, he'll just turn into a fairy because he's got no climbing animation. So remember when I said Link has a bit of a different uh, item storage thing? Well, you can actually pick up items like that. Most characters have to run into an item to pick them up. Link, no, he just puts that key in his pocket. And once we go to that lock over there, he'll just automatically use it. Also, unlike in Super Mario World, there's no animation for going to the uh, keyhole secret exit, so you just sort of stand there for a moment while music plays, and it's kind of awkward. We have a little item house here. No one's gonna stop me from getting on his lawn. Dude, if this wasn't an item house, and clearly labeled as an item house, I wouldn't have to break in, but, you know, now that you've locked the door, I have to break in in order to get the, uh, oh, 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 jeez, um, okay, uh, may maybe that wasn't an important goomb, uh, well, I mean, there's that picture there, but, you know, maybe it's just a coincidence, right? He wouldn't keep an actual goomba in his, uh, oh, dear, um, well, Toad, you've committed a crime. I think I'm gonna go to Frosty Frost Frostland. Just, uh, you know, avoid the authorities until this blows over, because I kind of just commit a murder. Anyway, we're going to be entering White Savage Zone, so I'm just gonna skip straight to the secret exit. Alright, here we are. Getting to the secret exit is simple enough. You just jump out of the boot, and you're in a pipe, and here's the key. See, we're done. That was easy enough, right? Oh yeah, and I'd just also like to point out, Mario and Luigi hold things to their side, uh, Peach and Toad hold things like in Super Mario Bros. 2, where they hold it over their heads. I forgot to make note of that earlier. And while we did open up a new level, there's actually another path in World 2 that leads to that level, so we're gonna put that off for now. And instead, we're going to be going to the second-to-last area of this world, and we've got some Super Mario Land 2 Goombas that are flying about. There aren't really too many Super Mario Land things in this game. Uh, the Goombas are kind of just in a miscellaneous section in the editor, so... We, unless you uh, put them in the game yourself, then you won't really have too many Super Mario Land objects. It's mostly focused on the original game, though a little less so. There's a lot of stuff from Super Mario Bros. 3, a fair amount of stuff from Super Mario Bros. 2, and World. It's actually very SMB3 based, actually. So it should be fairly obvious what the secret exit is here, but we're not going to go for that just yet. Uh, we want to find the uh, door that leads onwards, which is the one over here. But I kind of need to back off from it, so... Yeah, like that. Because Toad throws things very far. If I stood too close to that little the uh, block area, he would have just thrown it straight over, and that wouldn't have helped me at all. But anyway, yeah, this is the path that leads onward. And just a note, in the original version of Invasion 2... Uh, this area actually had the purple blocks, so yeah, you actually had to go to this area briefly in order to actually get to the secret exit here. Thankfully, in an update, that was changed, so it's only the purple blocks in the main area that you have to worry about. There's not too much else to this level, we're pretty much done. The level's kinda focused on the purple block gimmick. I mean, there is some level design here, but... Nothing too huge, doesn't really have any big gimmicks itself, but I do kind of enjoy this level. The normal exit, anyway. The secret exit is... Mm, not really tedious, more of a hassle than anything else, but... Anyway, I'll meet you back at the purple block area. Alright, and we're back. This is pretty simple. You just have to break all the purple bricks, which really isn't a problem at all. Unless you're very bad at throwing shells and end up throwing it into yourself, you shouldn't have too much of a problem actually aiming these things and breaking all the bricks. It's pretty much just a test of 
of throwing things, more or less. I, I guess it's kind of a good method of showing you how far you can throw things and how shells work with blocks. It's a lesson we won't use too much, but hey, it's appreciated nonetheless. And we got rid of all the purple blocks, so we're actually not going to get a standard exit, we get a star exit. Stars are basically the collectibles of this game. You can unlock doors with stars, though there aren't really star doors here, it's just star exit leads to the star palace right here, which is an area where you can grab uh, various items. At first we can only get a mushroom because all these other doors are locked by stars, as I said before. Uh, this is pretty much the only area with star locks, though. These other doors aren't locked, though, uh, since it would be kind of silly since, you know, you might go to World 7 and get a star, but that might be your only star, so why would you have a 7-star lock there? That would be a bit silly. So you can enter other worlds, but uh, the exit from the star warp won't actually create a path to any level, so all you'll get is a preview if you do that. But I don't want to spoil anything, so we're just going to move on to the dungeon of this area. And here we have our introduction to Dry Bones. That's actually a, a sprite uh, edit. Uh, this game actually uses the Super Mario World design of Dry Bones, which I don't like. But it was swapped with a custom sprite, so now it's, it's uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 Dry Bones, which is pretty nice, because I like the look of those a lot better. You can't kill Dry Bones with a standard jump, but you can kill them if you use an Ice Flower, because Ice Flower freezes a lot of enemies, and in fact, Fire Flower doesn't actually work on a lot of enemies, and Dry Bones are one of them. It'll just do absolutely nothing, but it will freeze some enemies. There are very few things that the uh, Ice Flower won't actually work on, so it is a very useful item. Plus, uh, Fire Flower can sometimes get you in a bit of trouble, uh, not, it's not really too often, it's usually in more gimmicky based things, but in order to start running, you have to press the run button, which is fairly simple, but that's also how you use a fireball, so if you take your hand off the run button for whatever reason, then you might end up uh, using a fireball by accident, which again, isn't usually a huge problem, but there are a few rare instances, like if you're on an ice block that's melted by fire flowers, then you'll end up sending yourself into a pit or something like that. But since you turn enemies into blocks with the Ice Flower, it usually won't put you in too much danger, unless you pick up the Ice Block and then, I don't know, if you're over a pit, you'll fall into it. It's not really something that comes up too much, but it's something to keep in mind. Oh yeah, and this was an elevator segment, but it really wasn't too useful. As long as you spin jump on the chomps, you won't be hurt by them, and... Heck, Peach doesn't have a spin jump, but she can just fly over him, so it's not too much of a problem. And here's the first boss of the game. It's Boom Boom. Boom Boom is really easy. The only thing that might trip you up is his invincibility period is actually longer than it is in Super Mario Bros. 3. So, you might get hit by Boom Boom once if you're used to that game. If not, though, he is very easy, and there's no real reason to get hit by Boom Boom. But with that, we are done with World 1. Next time on the Invasion 2, we're going to Subcon Underground. Because we made a vow that her mother would be found. Uh, I just referenced Sonic Underground, so I'm going to leave and feel terrible about myself.